listen up, because I'm about to put you up on game and teach you in a matter of minutes how to put a couple extra hundred dollars a month in your pocket. When I got into a money making position, I realized that the biggest thing that keep black people from making money is information. So many of y'all know so much to know nothing. And I had to figure that out. So look, the tea, the Nutriverse, and a host of other products with TLC. Let me break this down for you real quick and dispel all types of myths and rumors. This packet of tea right here retails for $80. You sell one packet of tea, the company gives you back $40 in commission, all right? You get one person to sign up for this tea and put it on auto ship. Every 30 days, you will make $40 off of one customer, all right? Sell one pack of tea a week to one person. That is 40, 80, 120, 160. That is $160 a month off of selling four packets of tea. Oh, you gotta have a big social media following. It's easy for you. No, 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 no. We all have a network. Family, friends, co-workers, PTA people, neighbors, you mean to tell me amongst all the people you come in contact with on a daily basis, you can't find one person to sell one product to. And then each week, each month, you compound on that. I'm not saying you finna get rich. I'm not saying you are gonna be able to buy a mansion. I'm not saying you finna be able to go to the Gucci store tomorrow, but a little extra never hurt nobody. The tea is a scam. It's a scam. It's diet tea. All right, then fuck it. Don't sell the tea. Sell whatever product speaks to your soul. TLC is just like Avon. They have a whole catalog for the products. Sell the toothpaste. Sell the skin moisturizer. Sell the multivitamin. Multivitamin surely can't be a scam. Find the product that speaks to you and find somebody to sell the product to. Want to make a little extra money? Click the link below to join my sales team. Listen, y'all, folks is out here making money. And it only costs you less than $80 to get involved. What do you have to lose? Now enjoy this damn video. Nessa girl, I sat down and watched the first three quarters of the Real Housewives of Atlanta last night, so I figured, hell, my viewing time made it Shouldn't be wasted. I might as well make a little coin off of it. Since I was sitting on the sofa eating dinner, texting, watching the boring ass shit, I said I'd call you, girl. Y'all want to talk about it? I'm really tired of talking about Kenya ass being hell bent on spraying the girls, but we gonna talk about it. Here it go. showed me on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and then my Married to Medicine episode would have came on. That would have been real cute because I actually was at both of those events. And we're going to talk about Cynthia's wedding because I've been waiting all this time to do so. Nevertheless, the episode opens up with them having a rehearsal dinner at Cynthia's house. They were trying to have a more formal rehearsal dinner, but Hurricane Delta would not let them girls be great and it did not let us be great. Baby. All of us had our spice of clothes. Oh my oh baby. I, baby, y'all saw me, bitch. I was sharp down to the thing. Had my space of clothes on, my Christian Louboutin shoes. Baby, that yes, God. Do. Fuck it, Neva. You act like you ain't never had nothing before. I ain't, bitch, okay? That was my first pair of red bottles, bitch. I stepped in that motherfucker so fresh. I so clean. I so fresh. We all looked good like pageant queens, honey. Nevertheless, the hurricane almost fucked up my fashions. Okay, the wedding was originally supposed to be outside and we ended up having it indoors. So, uh, the same held true with Cynthia and her rehearsal dinner. 
we end up seeing Eva. You want to know what's so funny? Granted, I haven't really been watching this season. It really ain't feel like Eva been missing. It really felt like Eva just still been a part of this show, but I guess that's because the last time I watched it, she really was. It was good to see Eva jump right back on in the mix of things, filming, had a microphone on, or whatever the case may be, doing a cha-cha slide like she used to do. They all get around her house or whatever, and uh, Kenya come. Kenya come talking about that bachelorette party. Did y'all see the way Candy was looking at her? Candy just did not appreciate that shit, especially considering the fact that Mistress Angel was the head of it. But see, here's my thing with Kenya, right? Like, they don't like Kenya. Kenya don't like them. And so I can follow the train of thought of them bitches ain't my friend. If it was me, they would do it to me, so I'm going to do it to them too. My question is, at what point do you ever want to be friends with the girls? Or at what point does it become enough? And the answer is never that I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to understand the logic behind all this because for me and y'all have witnessed the way I handle some of the people that don't like me. I just don't have the energy to be in that space all the time. Like when I first started out doing this stuff, I'm not going to lie, this shit bothered me and I was tempted to indulge. Okay, but then like after a while, the back and forth, literally, it drains your soul. It drains your lifeline. So I made the conscious decision in order for me to be the best me, I just have to ignore it. Like, them bitches could think they winning. They think they, they saying something about me. I'm not responding. They could think I'm a coward. They could think, they could think whatever they want to think. Like, I just don't, I can't be in that space and fulfill the plan that God has on my life. So my question is, can you, at what point do you just get out of the mud for the sake of, you know, just doing something else? Like I love when her and Marlo made up and Marlo was expressing how it's just tiresome. She don't have the energy no more to be fighting with her. And it is the God honest truth. Being in a negative space with somebody, whether they're a friend, family member, or somebody you barely even know or don't know, it's toxic and it is draining and it truly will block your blessings. Message. Um, but it just feels like Kenya's on a campaign to spray them girls. So Shamia has a party and they basically do a redo of the bachelorette party or whatever the case may be. And uh, Marlo comes into the thing. I'm here to tell you Marlo was full of shit. All right. There is no coincidence that Marlo drew that Marlo, Toya, and Kenya posted, it wasn't me. Now, it could be possible that they seen Kenya post first and then decided to post it behind them. And listen, I'm not mad with Marlo, and Portia can't get mad with Marlo either, bitch. Nobody wants to be associated with no woman that you would get your kitty box knocked in the laundry room with Tanya and the stripper. It's, it's, if, if it wasn't me, it's okay for me to say it wasn't me. Rarely do I ever agree with Portia, but I'm so down with Marlo when she said that Portia, me and Portia might be cool, but she not finna dictate and regulate who I be friends with. And that is the God honest truth. Portia, you know how this thing go. Is Kenya launching a campaign against you? Absolutely. Now, Latoya, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Latoya is the real reason why I decided not to watch this reunion. After, I mean, it's this season. Coupled with how I was already feeling coming into this bad boy, and then the antics that she pulled, the first episode she was on, I said, no, ma'am, I can't do this because I see through this and I see Latoya for what she is. And I'm here to explain it to y'all. We've gotten to a point now in reality television that everybody under the sun knows what it can do for you and for your trajectory, for your career, for your family, and moreover, for your finances if you become a big time reality star. Toya, Latoya came on the show trying to be a reality star. And what do I mean by that? Coming in, in her head with an imaginary list of bullet points that I must hit. I gotta be edgy. I gotta be drama. I gotta be sassy. I gotta be messy. You, you can tell she's in her head trying to check off all the boxes that make a reality star 
versus just being a genuine person. And what nobody, what she doesn't know, and what somebody should have told her is that authenticity is what wins this race. That is what makes people connect with you when you are authentic. There is nothing authentic about what Latoya is giving. She over here playing with saying what she needs to say over here on Porsche them side and she running back to Kenya saying whatever she got to say. You can tell that when she parked her car while they was micing her up, the producer said, Latoya, this is what we need from this scene. We need you to bring up this, 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 this. And she's like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then you run the scene to because the shit is so awkward and out of place and so left field. Quiet as it's kept, that's why Claudia Jordan didn't survive beyond one season because she was just, you know, so coachable as it relates to doing what they told her to do versus being an authentic person in the moment. And that's why when Portia was like, I, okay, girl, well, like, what's the point of you bringing this up here? And I'm looking at her like, yeah, like, when you got the diggiest bitch in the group getting you together, you know something is wrong. Um, this Bro, let me back up. Marlo got some pretty titties, bitch. She got some pretty old heavy ass titties. And you know, Marlo normally be approved when it comes to stuff like that. So I was glad to see she had some fun with them old uh, pretty trendy titties. Yes, go, Marlo. Um, whatever holiday year she went to get pumped, baby, they did her right. Or she, whatever plastic surgeon she fucked or stole them titties from. Nevertheless, they look good, bitch. It ain't none of our business how you got them. Um, Drew was going to beat Toya ass. And I think Toya been fucking with Drew for so long, it's about time that she do. It's like, Toya is just on a mission to be Kenya number two, and it's, I wouldn't be surprised if she don't return next season. Cynthia's wedding. Y'all, Cynthia's wedding was so beautiful. So a couple days before the wedding, Wendy Williams had did that whole Cynthia is selfish for having a super spreader event, and as a result of that, the Bravo cameras decided to not film that wedding at the last minute. They were there. They were there, they were outside, they were downstairs in the bridal suite part, but for PR or whatever, I guess they found it prudent to not be in the main wedding area and they decided to license Cynthia's wedding footage from her videographer and use other people's cell phone footage, so on and so forth. It was a beautiful star-studded wedding. Uh, Eva came down the aisle and ate, can't, Eva looked, she, Eva walked down that aisle, she walked in the door, she threw her shoulders back, stood up tall, and then she walked, bitch. Walk. And that shit, she stole the fucking show. I was expecting Cynthia to come out and do a model walk, but Cynthia was just all caught up in the emotion and she just walked regular. But it was a beautiful wedding. And when Cynthia, when they pulled that curtain back and Cynthia bent that corner, bitch, everybody gasped because she and her gown was so beautiful. Candy looked real good in her dress. Kenya looked real good in hers. Oh, baby, Mal and her hips. She looked good at her, Cynthia's mom, Noel, everybody looked good. And let me tell you something, that was one of the funnest weddings that I had been to in a very long time. It was very nicely done. The drinks was on point. The food, the hors d'oeuvres was on point. I had never been to a wedding. Um, every wedding that I've gone to, you always sat down and had a heavy plated dinner. If I was to get married or throw any type of party, I would do what Cynthia then did. And I guess for COVID reasons, or I don't know, or budget reasons, or for style reasons, they just did a, a heavy rotation of hors d'oeuvres. So all night long, just different hors d'oeuvres and finger foods were coming out. There was like a meat station with uh, some roast beef and some 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 rolls and some uh, some kind of beef, brisket, roast beef, something that you got to slice or whatever. But it was very eloquently, elegant, elegantly done. I'm sorry, eloquent is how you speak. The bar was free, baby, because you know I always judge somebody by open bar, cash bar, baby. The bar was free, bitch, and don't tr bitch, we drank up all the liquor, bitch. All of it. Um, it just was a good time, and I'm glad that Cynthia and Mike allowed me to be a part of that. The reception was everything. Dennis and Portia go to dinner. Dennis and Portia both look real good. You know, it's so weird calling, calling Dennis Dennis, because I know him personally as McKinley from when I used to go down to the hookah bar. He owned on Glen Iris called Crew. I met him through my homegirl Pretty Plates. She's in the business, too. They know each other from catering and restaurant stuff. So I, I've been all these years calling them McKinley because it it's so, so hard for me to call them Dennis. Nevertheless, that was a very mature conversation they had. 
Um, and the whole while I was watching it, I was like, you know what? This ain't supposed to be this hard. This just ain't supposed to be that this complicated. Um, I'm with Dennis when he said, why the fuck would I move back in there when you don't kick me out three times? But I'm with Portia when, bitch, you gave me reason to kick you out. You cheated, so on and so forth. Dennis wasn't lying when he said, me and you go through stuff and then now I got to deal with your mama machine, answering the phone and so on. Because, you know, y'all, you her child, she can't help but not want to deal with his bullshit and uh, hear his voice. That's why you need to stop telling your mama things. Tell Shamia and tell Lauren. But I do respect the fact that Portia said, I grew up without my dad and I would never do that to Pilar. So at least she gave Dennis some guarantees in that department. And you know what? As much of a hopeless romantic as Portia is, and as much as she wants the fairy tale, I actually respect her for saying, you know what? Then maybe we should just move on. Like just, let's just move on because we probably wouldn't even be talking if it wasn't for Pilar. And you know what? I think while there's still some semblance of love and respect amongst y'all too, that maybe y'all should just move on and be friends. Like, be best of friends. And let Dennis go on and get who he gonna get. And you go on and get who you gonna get. And y'all do the Will Smith. Uh, and with his ex-wife and Jada, that it just be one big, happy, blended family that loves on Pilar and all the other children that comprise the unions that y'all are about to form in the future. I mean, a family doesn't have to look like a certain thing anymore. We are in 2021. And a family can look like any configuration of love and support that you see fit. So I'm all for people ending on a good note and being mature enough to know that some shit ain't working. And this ain't working. So shouts out to Dennis and Portia for being mature in that regard and still holding on to the respect that they got for one another and moving on. Y'all, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. And I'm done calling y'all for the day. This is the third video. I'm going to watch Love and Marriage Huntsville, T.S. Madison Experience, and maybe Bell Collective later on tonight after I get home from the bar. And I'll call y'all later. Bad.